$965 million, one of the largest penalties ever. A global telecommunications company and its foreign subsidiary recently agreed to pay a combined criminal and civil penalty of more than $965 million to resolve charges arising from a scheme to pay massive bribes. The two companies conspired to violate the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act by paying more than $331 million in bribes to foreign government officials who had influence over the governmental body that regulated the telecom industry. The U.S. Department of Justice confirms that this international settlement is one of the largest criminal corporate bribery and corruption resolutions ever. We live in a global economy. Virtually all business around the world trade globally. Roughly 95% of the world's consumers are outside of the United States. Survival for U.S. corporations, then, is international trade. Corporations will suffocate and eventually die out if they don't trade globally. The most common question we get asked as a training company includes, who in the organization needs to know about international trade, and how do I justify this with my boss? Let's start with, what is trade compliance? At the heart of international trade is trade compliance. Trade compliance speaks to how well a company observes the laws and regulations that governs its international business operations from sea level to sea level. What is sea level to sea level, you ask? Sea level to sea level is from the corporate executive to the custodial engineers. There are import regulations and there are export regulations. Trade compliance mandates that companies who import and export adhere to all the respective regulations that apply to their merchandise. When we choose to import or export, we automatically take on a legal obligation to follow these rules and regulations. So, in thinking about your trade compliance, we have to consider things like Developing and maintaining effective and competitive supply chains. Managing risk and security at your facility and within the supply chain. Determining and adhering to export and import legislative requirements. Training and education within the organization from sea level to sea level. Providing and maintaining accurate and complete documentation giving proper classification of our merchandise, determining the country of origin of our items, accurately assessing the value of our goods, which ultimately leads to paying appropriate duties and taxes. As importers and exporters, we are obligated to provide thorough and precise trade information for all our international transactions. Now let's explore precepts of why is trade compliance important? A trade compliant organization is acutely aware that it must demonstrate knowledge of and adherence to trade laws, lay the foundation for how your imports and exports will be conducted and managed, or business partners, that is, or suppliers and our customers, they demand that we are legally compliant before agreeing to and signing a contract to doing business with us. Non-compliance increases exposure to penalties and fines. Conversely, compliance saves our company money as we get to negotiate cost-effective and competitive rates with service providers, take advantage of special programs that can reduce, eliminate, or refund duties, provide our products timely to our customers, minimize or eliminate storage and other charges. One overarching precept that is usually overlooked is being good corporate citizens. Good corporate citizens, you gasp. Isn't that reaching just a little bit? No, not really. 
When you consider that failure to meet import and export requirements is a violation of control measures that have been put in place to protect the security of our nation, the economy, the environment, the health and well-being of our citizens. When we get asked who should be involved, our standard response is everyone. Everyone in the organization from C-level to C-level corporate executive to the custodial engineers not only touches but also affects the international supply chain. Here's how. Corporate executives set the tone of the organization. They give their blessings for the trade compliance, empower employees who have direct responsibility for trade compliance, and encourage the other employees to cooperate. Finance and accounting are tasked with calculating accurate costing and valuation of our transactions, while procurement is responsible for selecting trusted and reliable suppliers who will also comply with trade laws. Sales and customer service are the front line, interacting with the customers. They need to be aware of the do's and don'ts within transactions, while HR handles screening and hiring of personnel, and may also be tasked with screening business partners. IT captures and maintains accurate data elements, and manufacturing is responsible for meeting customer as well as country requirements. Shipping and receiving coordinates with our service providers, determines the best and most cost-effective mode of transportation, meet packing requirements, and expedite the flow of goods. How is this done? Trade compliance starts with a solid understanding of the import and export landscape. We must seek to create a culture where everyone understands and recognizes the importance of trade compliance. It demands that companies implement strategies that engender a high level of sophistication with methodologies, demonstrate due diligence, ensure responsibilities are understood, and create best practices centered in internal controls and procedures. This landscape of trade compliance consists of people. Staff accordingly. Have adequate number of team members for your volume of international shipments. Everyone should be on board, truly believe in the mission, and work to carry out the goals. Processes. Develop workflows that demonstrate a consistent and repeatable compliant program. Paperwork, we must create clear and accurate documents that are in line with the current regulations. Additionally, we must develop record keeping processes that adhere to the prescribed timeframes. And policies, policies set the vision, give guidelines, serve as a roadmap, and explains standards. When do I do it? Trade compliance is a living process. It is ongoing. It is daily. I like to say every day except holidays. Why? Because even government officials and customs officials are off on holidays. So, Set up regularly scheduled times for activities such as pre-market classifications and reviewing your current classifications, post-auditing of transactions for accuracy, amend and report inaccurate submittals, meet with your service providers and be clear about your expectations. Stay up to date with training and train internally as needed for each department. International trade is no longer an afterthought, no longer at the end of the food chain for the sale of our new product or import of new components. No longer does it sit on the sideline of an organization. Trade compliance is ever evolving from mere operations to the front line, the beginning of the food chain. It directs, manages, and mitigates risk within the organization and thus strategically drives value. To remain competitive, a smart corporation must strike that balance 
between timely and cost-efficient movement of goods internationally while complying with complex regulations designed to ensure secure and certifiable international shipments. Effective global trade compliance practiced from sea level to sea level will improve a company's bottom line.